Hi Slow Scouts, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video I want to talk about this week's exciting crash landing of asteroid samples. Uh -huh. The Japanese have gone and done it again, got us back some piece of asteroid. So let's start. Asteroids are chunks of rock orbiting around our sun. Unlike planets, they don't have enough mass to sphericalize their shape, and nor do they have a cleared out orbit. So collisions do occur. There are three broad categories of asteroids. C-type are the most common type, making up 75% of known asteroids. They're dark in color and have a low albedo, which means that they're not particularly reflective because they're mostly made up of carbon. S-types are the second most common, making up about 17% of known asteroids. These are silicaceous, or in other words, stony, but they're moderately bright, made up of iron and magnesium silicates. Lastly, the X-type group together the remaining asteroids with similar looking spectra. Carbonaceous asteroids are thought to preserve pristine materials from the early solar system. And that's why scientists are so keen to get their hands on them. They can provide us with knowledge about the origin and evolution of the inner planets, and in particular, they can give us insights about the origin of Earth's water and organic materials, all relevant to understanding the origins of life here on Earth. So asteroids on Earth are actually quite a common occurrence. Asteroids bombard the Earth all the time. It's estimated that 30 small asteroids hit the Earth every year, where they burn up in our atmosphere, creating meteors. If we're lucky and it survives the immense temperatures, they fall to the ground as meteorites. A collector's dream, these meteorites can sell for millions of dollars. But the problem with meteorites are that they're not pristine. They've been burnt up by our atmosphere and potentially contaminated by life on Earth. We would never know if life found on a meteorite was really from outer space or had Earth origins. And that's why we need sample return missions to collect asteroid samples at the source, aka in situ. In 2010, the Japanese space agency JAXA successfully returned samples from an S-type asteroid with their Hayabusa mission. And this week, they've gone and done it again with Hayabusa 2, making for the second time ever that we've collected asteroid samples in situ. Launched in 2014, Hayabusa 2 took almost four years to rendezvous with the asteroid 162173 Ryugu. Unlike the asteroid visited by Hayabusa, this one had a completely different chemical composition. It was a C-type asteroid, a near-Earth asteroid, and a potentially hazardous one too, despite only being a kilometer across in size. Over a year and a half, Hayabusa 2 surveyed the asteroid and collected samples from its surface. Originally, the plan was to obtain three different types of samples collected from different regions on the surface of the asteroid. Some surface material with traits of hydrous minerals, some surface material with evidence of water presence, and lastly, some subsurface material. To achieve this goal, the spacecraft carried four rovers on board designed to explore the asteroid surface and seek out the ideal location for samples. However, when the spacecraft dropped the first two rovers, Hebu and Al, to the surface, they found that the region was completely covered in boulders, and there wasn't anywhere for them to obtain soil samples. They released a third rover mascot a month later, and this one was successful, but the fourth rover, named Rover 2, failed before it was even released. A year later, they deployed it into the orbit around the asteroid to make gravitational measurements before it crash-landed onto the asteroid a few days later. In the end, the mission was able to retrieve some topsoil and some material that they dislodged from the surface by firing a kinetic impactor at the asteroid. Hayabusa 2 left the asteroid in November 2019 and then flew by Earth just last week. Just hours before it did so, it released a capsule containing the samples that it collected and then it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, crash landing in southern Australia. 
There it transmitted a position speaking signal that allowed JAXA to locate it and the sample then was securely transported back to the JAXA labs in Japan for science analysis to begin. Hayabusa 2's mission has now been extended and it will use up its remaining fuel to explore other objects in the solar system. Its next target is an L-type asteroid called 2001CC21 that falls into the S-type category. The aim is to do a high-speed flyby in 2026. The camera on board of Hayabusa was not designed for such a flyby, but if all goes to plan, then it would next try to rendezvous with 1998KY26, a micro asteroid just 30 meters across with a rotation period of about 10 minutes. It would be the first visit to such a fast-moving asteroid. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.